some people have preconceived notions uh, as to what they want to hear the astrologer say. You know, that's very common. And uh, secondly, the most common I would say is that uh, they haven't had an accurate reading. Real accuracy is determined by the synchronization of the alignments in the heavens to the events in a person's life. Okay. As far as uh, those astrologers specifically who claim that we're just adjusting the chart to fit our own whim have no understanding of the dynamics of time and the motion of the earth. You know, I can give you an example. Um, let's say that a person, two people are born at the exact same geo coordinate in the exact same hospital. All right. One person is on the first floor, another person is on the fourth floor. All right. And if you've ever seen the sunset, you ever watched the sunset, you can elevate yourself two feet and watch it set again. Then you can elevate yourself six feet and watch it set again. And as long as you can keep moving up into the air, which is altitude, you can repeatedly watch the sun set. So a person who was born on the same geo coordinate, let's say the Empire State Building, a person born on the first floor at 6.30 on the, on the first day of spring, 6.30 p.m., well, the sun will be conjuncted descending. But if a person is born at 6.30 p.m. in New York City at the Empire State Building at 6.30 p.m., then that sun is not going to set on them for about uh, uh, eight or nine minutes. So uh, that person's sun will be two degrees from the descendant. Now, when you progress the chart so that the alignments on that day, on the day of progression, concur with an event in a person's life, that, that same even though these two people were born at 6.30, according to the watch, they weren't born exactly in the same space and time in terms of the sun being close to the angle. So uh, the person who was born upstairs, we're going to need to adjust the chart so that that, that that motion that is watched later on in progression concurs with an event or a process in their life. Right? Those astrologers who say that we're just adjusting the chart to our own whim actually have no, no concept of that, that dynamic. You know, that's a, a very complex issue because the, the real question is, what time is a person born, all right? And you're in a hospital with nurses and doctors or a midwife. If you're not in a hospital, you're in a birthing center. Is that person an astrologer in the first place? And the clinical definition of birth, does it really fit the astrological dynamic? You know, like, I'm going to give you an example. I gave birth to my own son, all right? And his head popped out. And for like the first 45 seconds to a minute, he wasn't breathing. He was blue. He was gray. And about 45 seconds to a minute after his head popped out, at 9.25 and 33 seconds, he coughed <coughs> and started breathing. And his, his skin turned pink. He was oxidized. And he was still in his mother. And it, it, he didn't come out of his mother till seven minutes later. All right? So that, that time is like seven minutes is almost two degrees, depending on what sign is rising. In fact, it was the sign of Aquarius rising. So the, uh, and here in this hemisphere, Aquarius rises very rapidly. All right? So seven minutes is, uh, is a little bit more than two degrees in the sign of Aquarius in this hemisphere, right? at this um, latitude. So when we look at the, his progress, you know, his progressions and the events, you know, when he got his first uh, uh, checkup, 
the first time he fell down and hurt himself and stuff. When we look at that with the chart, the time that he started breathing is the time that works for him, not the time that he was actually separated from his mother. So in a hospital setting or in a birthing center when you have a midwife or a doctor who isn't astute in astrological practice nor concerned with it at all, then what time would they say my son was born? You see, because at the time that I used and the time that he started breathing, which is the time that I used, he was still immersed in his mother from the neck down. You know, and uh, I believe that that is the reason why a lot of birth times aren't accurate, because they don't take into account when that when that form being born was oxidized, and um, that's the key. You know, it's the first indrawn breath, not when your feet or when your head finally left in the uh, vaginal canal. It's a, a controversial issue in, in astrological circles. I can only speak for myself, all right? I, um, I use a moving progress, progression, all right? And using these progressions, I find that the equal ascendant to work. And in this case, the cusps are harmonic aspects of the ascendant degree. Um, when it comes to uh, personality profiling and you're not dealing with predictive measure uh, I find the equal house system to work the best there too I, I use two house systems simultaneously you know overlapped in my mind I use whole equal and I use equal ascendant spontaneously you know um, simultaneously so, you have different technique and different frame of mind with different astrologers, and therefore, the, you have to find the house system that fits your method and your technique and your considerations the best. I think that question is like uh, preferential. You know, if you use the individual doing the measure and the delineation, find more accuracy using the Vedic measure, then by all means you should use the Vedic measure. If conversely you are more more astute in delineating a chart using the tropical measure, then by all means use the tropical measure. I think because I use both systems. All right. Um. I think it's like using the metric system and the, the King's measure, all right? Um, yeah, you want to measure your doorway, okay? If you measure it in centimeters or if you measure it in inches you're go and you measure it accurately using the tape measure, okay, from either system, then you're going to determine the exact width and height of that door. It's the same way reading a chart. If you know how to delineate from a sidereal perspective, you're going to arrive to accurate answers. If you know how to delineate from the tropical measure, then you are going to arrive to accurate answers. And to, to say one is better than the other is like saying that the metric system is more accurate than the king's measure. The object that you're measuring doesn't get any longer or any shorter. Secondly, uh, the most basic, the most simplistic definition or keyword for the planet is usually the most accurate. I mean, you keep it simple and uh, you keep it universal. You know, there is definitely a margin of personal experience with every planetary energy that exists with every individual. 
I mean, Mars for this person may not be the same as Mars for this person, just like food, you know, a carrot may taste delicious to a person who loves vegetables, but a person who isn't fond of vegetables isn't going to be partial to that carrot, right? So it's the same way, astrologically, uh, one person's pain is another person's pleasure, and vice versa. So to keep it universal and simple is the easiest way. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, or visit the website, link down in the box. And don't forget to share it. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Tell them to come visit my page. I'll shop in their game right on up for them. You know what I mean? Come and see me. Check my page, all right? If you want to know a little bit more about cosmophysics and how I apply the science of astrology, check out my videos here. Subscribe to my channel, all right? Visit often. Leave your comments. I can interact with you. Visit my website, Cosmophysics.